On the other hand, according to a study released last November, if the U.S. government fails to implement the COROS FTA, while other countries finalize their FTAs with Korea, the United States will lose some 345,000 jobs, $20 billion in export growth, and $40 billion in GDP growth. The Cleveland area and the state of Ohio stand to gain a lot from passage of the Korea-U.S. free trade agreements. Let's look at a few state and local exports. Ohio's key industries include precision machinery and aerospace industry manufacturing and automobile industry. These industries' products are among the top 10 exports from Ohio, uh, to, uh, Ohio to Korea, except the automobile sector. Ohio's largest export to Korea that is not duty-free is refrigeration compressors. Ohio companies shipped $21 million worth of them to Korea in 2008 and paid tariffs of 8%. Your propulsion industry sold $17 million worth of gas turbine or turbo propeller parts in the same year. And the same 8% tariff was collected on them. Those tariffs will also go away completely when the COROS FTA takes effect. Ohio's world-class aerospace industry, employing 66,000 people, will also enjoy growing demands as air travel and air freight transportation grow between the two countries. Last month, the Korea aerospace industry chose a propeller system made by hot cell propeller of Pika, Ohio, for its aircraft development projects. This may be only a start. More and more joint projects like this will be coming with the help of the Korea-US free trade agreements. Farmers may have as much to gain from passage of the Korea-U.S. free trade agreements as manufacturers do. The American Farm Bureau Federation and the trade associations representing beef, pork, poultry, wheat, corn, soybeans, and most other agricultural commodities strongly support it. Ohio is a major soybean growing and, and exporting state. Soybeans were its largest agricultural export commodity in 2008. Korea is the world's 10th largest market for soybeans. Korea's 5% tariff on soybeans will be immediately eliminated. Looking at the Cleveland area, we see that it ranked 26th among all U.S. metro areas in 2008 in the value of its worldwide exports, $9.7 billion. Measured in dollar value, the top three products exported from this area were, were chemicals, non-electrical machinery, and fabricated metal products. There are thousands of items in these three categories and imposes tariffs, and Korea imposes tariffs ranging from 3 to 8% on almost all of them. Those tariffs will disappear upon ratification of the Korea-U.S. free trade agreements, except for a tiny percentage that will be phased out over a few years. One Cleveland company that is looking forward to that is the Pipeline Development Company, or Plitco. This is a family-owned business that makes pipeline maintenance and repairs fittings and employs about 100 people. Plitco has been in business since 1949 and has been exporting to Korea for many years. Most of the company's products face a Korean tariff of 8%, which will not be sustainable if uh, Congress doesn't pass the Korea-U.S. free trade agreements. This is because Plitco's main competitors are in Europe and Korea and the European Union have initial the free trade agreements, and the EU Parliament is expected to vote on it this year. If that FDA takes effect and Korea-U.S. free trade agreement does not, Plitco will find it difficult at best 
to keep its grip on the Korea market. In exchange for Korea's great openness to American imports, the United States will not have to do much to open its markets to Korean imports. They already are open. The average tariff, tariff on imports from Korea is 3.7% here. The average Korean tariff on imports is 11.2%. With the Korea-US free trade agreements, the average will be close to 0% on both sides of the Pacific. This is not just free trade, it's fair trade. Agreements with that pre 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 premise is widespread in Congress and in the private sector. Last November, 44 House Democrats and 44 Republicans signed a letter to President Obama asking him to submit the course FTA to Congress as soon as possible. Last month, Senators John Kerry of Massachusetts and Richard Lugar of Indiana, Chairman and Ranking Member respectively of the Foreign Relations Committee, sent the President a similar letter. Almost 1,000 companies and trade associations representing industries from B to Z are on record as supporting the Coros FTA. I said B to Z, instead of A to Z, because the one industry that still opposes it is the auto industry. Needless to say, that is an important industry here in Cleveland, in Ohio, and in the United States as a whole. It is an important industry in Korea too. So I want to discuss the auto trade issue with you, because I know there are people in this room who understand that the complexity of the industry and how trade affects it. All the big auto companies now have production and supply chains that snake all around the world. So a Russian consumer may own a Chevy, excuse me, I mean Chevrolet, that was built in Korea using parts imported from the United States. And one of you may own a Hyundai Sonata that was built from start to finish in Alabama. Consumers don't know how or where their cars are or put together when they buy them, but you understand the industry's complexity. Because of that complexity, it is important that the auto industry establish cooperative mechanisms among and between countries. And it is important that governments get rid of unnecessary barriers to building those mechanisms, barriers such as tariffs, regulations, and technical standards. I have been involved in almost all important auto negotiations between Korea and the U.S. for more than 20 years in my various positions in the Korean government. I am fully aware of the concerns of the U.S. auto industry has. And I can say that U.S. and Korean officials worked together to address them. Three years ago, the, those negotiations gave birth to this agreement, which has all the desired market opening measures. To wit, the Coros FTA does away with Korea's 8% tariff on the import of American cars and 10% tariff on the import of American light trucks immediately upon implementation, devises Korea's automobile domestic consumption tax so that big cars like US-made ones will be taxed almost equally to small cars.